For this lesson, I'm going over conductivity and resistivity. The reason I'm going over both because you're kind of saying the same thing just in a different way. It's kind of like saying the glass is half empty and glass is half full. And it's very easy to go over those and you'll see the characteristics behind them as we go on. So the first one we're going to go over is resistivity. Resistivity is the property of how a given material impedes current flow. Now, there's different materials that are going to have different resistivities. Uh, copper may be better than zinc. Silver should be better than gold, and so on. And we're going to determine how to define the resistance of these particular materials based on what material it is, the length, and the area. The thing you need to be aware of, every, all these equations are in the metric system, as well as you need to understand what area you're looking for. Is it a rectangular shape or a circular shape? And we'll go over that more in the examples. Next is conductivity. Conductivity is the measurement of a material's ability to conduct current. Again, it's like what we were saying earlier where with resistivity, it impedes current. Now we're talking about how to conduct current. You're saying the same thing, just in a different way. And just like last time, we need to know the material, the length, and the area. Now, the material is going to be either given by resistivity or by conductivity, which again, they're very similar. It's just one's going to be the reciprocal of the other. And you can find the resistivity and conductivity by either the FE handbook or any of your PE references. A term that's associated with conductivity and resistivity is conduction current density. When a current is uniformly distributed over a cross-section area, the measurement of the distribution is conduction current density, which is represented by the letter J. So if you have a very thin wire with a lot of current going through it, it has a very, very dense current density because you're putting all those electrons, all that current through that tiny wire. Whereas a bus bar like we have in the picture there, it's a very big bus bar. So if you have a very low current, it's not as dense. It's spread out through that whole bus bar. And that's how you come up with the density is J equals current over the area. And we'll go over that more in the examples. The last element to be aware of is how temperature affects conductors. For metallic conductors, the resistivity and resistance vary linearly with changes in temperature, and that's stated from the FE handbook. So, if you have a cold bus bar or a cold conductor, it's going to have a very low resistance, which means it's going to conduct current very well. As you raise that temperature, the resistance will grow, which means it will conduct current not as well. And this is linearly, so the equation we're given here will find out a given temperature with a given resistance and find out where the resistance is with the later temperatures. The thing to be aware of is co uh, temperature coefficient is usually given, or you can find this in some of your PE reference material. And we'll go over this more in later examples. Let's jump into our first problem here with a relatively easy one. A copper bus bar is approximately three meters in length and has a rectangular cross section of five millimeters by 20 millimeters. The ambient temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Find the resistance of the bus bar. All right, let's write down what we know. So we know the length is three meters. Okay, we know the cross section is five millimeters by 20 millimeters. So let's convert, uh, well, let's convert that into meters. So our area is 20 millimeters by five millimeters. And if we convert that to meters, and we convert that, it's gonna be 0 0.02 meters by 0 0.005 meters. So our area is going to come out to be area equals 1 times 10 to negative 4 meters square. I could have went ahead and converted 20 millimeter to 5 millimeters in the area and then convert it that way, but it's just e easier if I just went ahead and moved the decimal points early. Okay, so we have the area and we have the length. And we have the temperature at zero degrees, at zero degrees Celsius. So find the resistance of the bus bar. Well, now we need to find resistivity. Look at our FE manual. We found that resistivity at zero degrees Celsius is 1.55 times 10 to negative 8 ohms times meters. And this was found in the FE manual. Now, just to give you a heads up, the resistivity may be given in most of your problems because the resistivity is 
it's not always the same in book to book. It's very close, but not always the same. So just keep that in mind, this usually is given. But for now, I went ahead and referred to the FE handbook to get this, uh, this particular value. Okay, so look at our equation right here. R equals resistivity times length divided by area. We have all those values. Now we can plug and chug this in our calculator. So it comes out to be 1.55 times 10 to negative 8 ohms times meters. And this is going to be multiplied times our length, which is 3 meters. This is going to be over our area, which is going to be 1 times 10 to negative 4 meters square. Plug and chug that in our calculator. It's going to give me an answer of 4.65 times 10 to negative 4 ohms. Or in our case, 465 micro ohms. And that's our final answer. Okay, that's a relatively easy one. Let's go to another one. All right, let's jump into another easy one here. We have a 10 gauge copper wire that has a resistance of 15 ohms per thousand feet. What is the conductivity? All right, so we're looking for this guy right here. Same as always, let's write what we know. We know the resistance equals 15 ohms. We know the length is 1,000 feet. Unfortunately though, a lot of our equations here are in the metric system. So we're going to have to convert this 1,000 feet to meters. Well, using our uh, Casio, there's a conversion number three on there that will convert feet straight into meters. So instead of looking through all of our books, we can just use our calculator. Give us 304.8 meters. Saves us a little time there. Now we need to find the area. Well, to find the area, we have to look up in our code book what a 10 gauge wire diameter is. 10 gauge wire in our code book is listed as 0 0.102 inches in diameter. And same thing we stated earlier, this has to be in the metric system. So I'm going to multiply that 0 0.102 by 25.4, and that's going to give us 2.59 millimeters. With me so far? We're going to convert this millimeters to just straight meters because all of our equations are plug and chug based on meters. So that's 0 0.00259 meters. Next, I need to find the area. And again, since it's a wire, it's a circular item. So for that, area equals pi times radius square. Well, we have the diameter. To find the radius, you divide it by 2. So that's going to be pi times 0 0.00259 meters divided by 2. And we got to square that. And that's going to give us an area of, once we plug a chug in our calculator, 5.27 times 10 to negative 6 meters square. Okay. So now we have our resistance, we have our length, and we have our area. Well, the thing is, though, I don't have resistance in this one. I have G. Well, the resistance is the reciprocal of that. Or, I'm sorry, G is the reciprocal of resistance. So if we plugged and chugged this in our formula, it's going to look something like this. Conductivity equals 304.8 meters over, and again, it's the reciprocal, so I can actually put my 15 ohms right down there. And this is going to be times an area, which is 5.27 times 10 to the negative 6 meters square. And once we plug and chug that in our calculator, it's going to give us a final answer of 3.86 times 10 to the 6. And that's going to be Siemens per meter. And that right there is our final answer. All right, let's jump to another problem. All right, we're going to jump to a fun one right here. The resistance of a copper power line 
is 100 ohms at 20 degrees Celsius. Find the power line resistance during a hot day of 37 degrees. So on a relatively room temperature day, it's 100 ohms. But on an extremely hot day of 37 degrees Celsius, the resistance is going to change. We're going to write down what we know. The first resistance is R1, is 100 ohms. The first temperature reading with that resistance is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. Pretty simple. All right, and we know the second temperature reading, which is T2, is 37 degrees Celsius. Look at our equation down here. We have everything we need except the temperature coefficient. Well, the temperature coefficient can be found in a few ways. Some of your PE reference material has the temperature coefficient. However, a majority of problems it may be given because the temperature coefficient is not exactly the same from book to book. It may vary slightly. So be advised, this might be given. In my PE reference book, it's 0 .004. So I think we have enough here to start plugging and chugging. So we have R2, again, that's the resistance we're looking for. We want to look for the resistance at that temperature. It's equal to R1, which is 100 ohms, times 1 plus, and this is going to be our temperature coefficient of 0 0.004 times second temperature minus the first temperature. And we can plug the rest of this in our calculator, giving us a final answer of 106.8 ohms. Like we talked about earlier in the PowerPoints, when you increase temperature, it increases resistance. By raising the temperature on this hot day by 17 degrees, it raised the temperature of this power line by 6.8 ohms. So that right there will be our final answer. All right, let's do one more problem. For this last problem, there's a current of 5 amps flowing through a circular conductor with a diameter of 15 millimeters. Assume that the current is uniformly distributed. Determine their current density. All right. So we're looking for J, which is current density. Same as last time, let's write down what we know. We know our current is 5 amps. And we know this is a circular item that has a diameter of 15 millimeters. So we have a diameter. 15 millimeters. Well, I have an equation right there that actually fits what we need. So we need to find the area. Now keep in mind, these problems I'm giving you, I'm not automatically giving you everything in meters. Sometimes it's going to throw you off and it may give you inches or millimeters or centimeters. I'm doing this on purpose because not always are you going to get it in the exact way you can plug and chug. So it's best to always get, be aware that you're going to have to convert these. So. Our area for this guy is same as last time. Area equals pi times radius square, which comes out to be pi times, now this is 15 millimeters, so we're gonna have to convert that to straight meters, which is 0 0.015 meters. Divide by two, because this is the radius, and then we gotta square it. And we're gonna plug and chug that in our calculator. Give us an area of 1.77 times 10 to negative 4 meters square. It's pretty easy. So now we have our area, we have our current. All we have to do is plug the rest in our calculator. So J equals I over area, which comes out to be 5 amps over 1.77 times 10 to negative 4. Do apologize for the sloppy handwriting. That's going to give us a final answer of 28248.6 amps per meter square. And obviously, to clean that up, it's going to come out to be 28.2 times 10 to the 3 amps per meter square. And that right there is our current density for that conductor. Hopefully you learned enough information here to be dangerous. Hope you all have a good day.